Hip pain can be tricky for physiotherapists to differentiate between different pathologies when compared to lumbar spine, SIJ, pelvis. In this video, I'm going to go through the hip special tests you can use to help you to figure out what is going on with the patient and which pathology they have. So for hip impingement, one of the tests we can do is our quadrant test or our flexion adduction internal rotation or FADIR test. So for this test, we're going to bring the patient's um, leg up into flexion 90 degrees, then we're going to adduct the leg and then add internal rotation. Some people might do a scooping type motion with this as well. And what you're looking for with this a positive test would be pain um, around the area of the hip that you're looking at. So the Faber's test of the hip is a flexion abduction external rotation test. So for this test we're going to bring the foot onto the knee in this position and then we're going to stabilize through the uh, other hip and we're going to come down into this abducted externally rotated position and then we'll be asking for pain. So this test will be positive for pain in the hip area or groin itself but also if you had pain into the lower back or SIJ then you might be thinking that there was an SIJ problem and you move on to your SIJ test which is in another video. Okay, so our ligamentum teres test, or other people might call it old O'Donnell test, you bring the um, leg up to 70 degrees of flexion with about 30 degrees of abduction and then in this position what you're going to do is internally and externally rotate the leg and you would be looking for pain and or laxity in that position which would potentially indicate a ligamentum teres tear. So our Fitzgerald test is a test for the anterior labrum. So for this we're going to maximally flex the hip, we're going to maximally abduct the hip and externally rotate the hip and then what we're going to do is come back into adduction, internal rotation and extension. So you can go back through that movement. It's kind of a scooping test looking for anterior labral issues. For our Fitzgerald test looking more at the posterior labrum, we're going to go into maximal flexion, adduction and internal rotation. And then we're going to scoop into abduction, external rotation and extension. Let's do that again. So we start from adduction, internal rotation and flexion and we're going to come across into abduction, external rotation and extension and then we'd be looking for posterior hip pain which may indicate posterior labral pathology. So for our groin test of the hip we're going to come up into 120 degrees of flexion, we're going to come across into adduction by 10 degrees and then we're going to axial load the hip and go external and internal rotation and a positive test would be pain in the hip instability or feeling their familial symptoms. So for our dial test at the hip, we're gonna uh, maximally internally and externally rotate. And then what we're gonna do is externally rotate the leg maximally and let go. So what the, should happen is the foot should move back towards the midline. If the foot stays there completely, so there's no movement whatsoever. This might indicate some ligamentous laxity around the hip. Our log roll test is simply rolling the leg in a supine position from external rotation to internal rotation, and then feeling one side versus the other and seeing if there's any significant difference between the amount of range of motion one side to the other, which again, if there was a lot more laxity and uh, freedom of movement, you might, that might indicate some ligamentous laxity, dysplasia or other conditions of hypermobility type um, presentations. So one of the things you can do is look for stress fractures in the hip area. And one of the tests is called a fulcrum test for this. So for this test, what we're gonna do is bring the hand underneath the leg onto the opposite um, leg and then create with the web space of the hand on the distal femur create a downward force and we'll be looking for pain up and around that femoral head and femoral neck what we can then do is we can come more um, proximally so this would be more provocative if you're more proximal creating that downward force and we're looking for pain in and around the area of their symptoms so for our greater trochanteric pain syndrome, one of the tests is simply palpation of the greater trochanter. So you palpate through the greater trochanter 
and see whether that's painful compared to the other side. Positive test would be pain specific to that area compared to the uh, asymptomatic side. Another test for GTPS would be a, a FADER test. So for this, we're gonna take the leg up into flexion, adduction, external rotation, and then I want to resist an internal rotation force. Okay, hold the foot there, don't let me move you. I'm creating an internal rotation force. I'm pushing into external rotation and Kate is doing an internal rotation movement. Pain in and around the greater trochanter would be a positive test. So another test for GTPS would be a resisted abduction test. So if we come into adduction, which puts compression, compressive force over that um, greater trochanter area, and then ask Kate to um, push up against my hand. So you're resisting an abduction force in an a deduction position, a positive test would be pain over the greater trochanter. So with the stance test, we're gonna take the leg to 90 degrees and we're gonna hold that position for 30 seconds, looking for pain in and around the greater trochanter on the standing leg side. Compare that from side to side, a positive test would be pain around the greater trochanter on the stance leg for 30 seconds. So for a hernia test, you get the patient to isometry. So if you um, lift your head and your neck off the bed, so hold that position, hold that position. So we're gonna isometrically hold an abdominal um, crunch while palpating through the inguinal region for any lumps, bumps, or abnormal protuberances. And then relax. A positive test would be feeling uh, a lump or bump that, that could potentially be a hernia. So a fair test for deep gluteal uh, pain syndrome would be um, a, a flexion adduction internal rotation test. So we'd be in, in sideline position. We're gonna stabilize through the acetabulum. We'd come uh, take the leg over the top so that we're in a flexion position, an adduction position. This leg you can, uh, underneath leg you can move out of the way. And then we're gonna create internal rotation by pulling up on the shin in that position a positive test would be pain in deep into that gluteal region. For Ober's test, we're testing an, around the uh, ITB for tightness of the ITB. So if we stabilize through the hip and then basically bring the leg into slight extension and then just allow that leg to drop towards the table. What you're looking for is a feeling of tightness or the inability for the leg to fully drop to the table some people will do that with a knee flex position. I prefer it with this knee extended position. But again, you're comparing sides to see whether there's a difference. Positive test would be tightness or inability to drop on that side. So for a noble compression test, we're gonna come onto the lateral condyle of the femur with the knee in flexion. And we're gonna take the knee down into extension while compressing through that lateral condyle. What you're expecting with ITB syndrome would be that around 30 to 40 degrees when it's um, maximally taut, you'd expect pain at that, at that level. So as you come into extension, you're looking for pain in the lateral condyle um, as you do that, that's a positive test. So Eli's test looking for rec fem contracture would be prone lying, just bending the knee up. If you have a patient that's got quite a lot of contracture through their quads, what you'll find is that as you lift the, the foot up, they lift their pelvis off the bed. So as you lift the foot up, the bum will come off the table. And that's a sign uh, signifier that there's some tightness in the anterior structures, rec fem, quads, etc. So with Craig's test for antiversion, what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up into a 90 degree position of the, the knee, of the knee with it in a prone position. We're gonna palpate the greater trochanter on the side of the leg. And then what we're gonna do is internally rotate until the greater trochanter becomes more prominent under your fingers. For most people, this should be between eight to 15 degrees of internal rotation. If there's a lot more than that before you start to feel that bony prominence, then that, that's looking to be positive for antiversion of that hip. For a Thomas test, what we're gonna do is get the patient so that the hips are right on the edge of the bed. We're gonna flex up the non-symptomatic side so that the, the spine is nice and flat. And we're looking for um, the leg on this side, whether there's any lifting up through this leg, which would suggest contracture through the rec fem. You can also flex the knee on this side as well 
to see where, how much flexibility they have through that rec fem because then you're uh, putting it on maximal stretch by extending the hip and then flexing the knee. What you can also do with this is also look at bringing across to the midline, so just pushing into a deduction to check for the ITB at the same time. So just a good one for general flexibility through the hip flexors and through the uh, rec fem muscle. If you found that video helpful, then you'll love the one on the screen now, which is all about knee special tests to help you as a physio differentiate between knee conditions. If you enjoy this sort of series, then subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, then you won't miss any videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers, guys.